Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Eric from You Get Tech. I'm going to be doing a 3D mark test and do the stress test. I'm going to be simulating using the phone for extended periods of gaming and we're gonna see whether there's any thermal throttling happening for any of the phones. So let's start the stress test guys. Alright guys, so the tests have completed. Just by touching some of these phones, they do feel pretty hot from the screen. 
not so much on the full 2 though. Let me show you the, the results one by one. So it has an 82.3% stability and looking at the scores right after the tent loop on the S10 Plus, this is where the thermal throttling happened. So right after that from 11 to 20, they are a straight line. So for the Note 10 Plus, the thermal throttling didn't happen until after test number 13. So after that, it went down and stayed at pretty much the same level. So the score doesn't get too low, still 2600. And in terms of temperature, it hit pretty toasty 46 degrees. But it's pretty cool that uh, it doesn't throttle immediately. So the Note 10 Plus is a pretty good phone. So for the S20 Ultra, if you can see from the graph, it's pretty weird. So it dropped off at test number 4, did test number 5, and right after test number 6, it went back up and then dropped down to 1000. 900 and yeah stayed at the 1700 all throughout so pretty bad scores here getting throttled really badly temperature is 43 degrees so looking at the graphs for these phones i think the s20 ultra is the only one that's pretty inconsistent so for the note 20 ultra there's a huge drop from test number four it went to 1800 and stayed there there is throttling happening for that one maxed out at 43 degrees so let's find out how the s21 ultra did s21 ultra had a high score did pretty well and so it throttled incrementally but the scores aren't as bad as the one that you got on the s20 ultra and the note 20 ultra so it's looking like the exynos 990 is not a very well optimized chip despite what samsung engineers are saying so finally we've got the snapdragon here now if you can see it did start throttling at the midpoint but the performance didn't go down too bad so it started throttling at test number nine but stayed pretty much at the 3000 range temperature maxed out at 40 degrees so that's pretty good guys so in terms of battery loss the s10 plus lost 11 percent 12 percent on the note 10 plus 8 percent on the s20 ultra 8 percent as well on the note 20 ultra 9 percent on the s21 ultra and 10% on the Z Fold 2. So looking at the scores from all these Samsung phones, the Exynos 990 on the S20 Ultra and the Note 20 Ultra performed the worst. He started off pretty good. It's the best score was 4,200 here, 4,300 for the Note 20 Ultra, but went all the way down to 1,700 on both phones. The S10 Plus and the Note 10 Plus didn't do too bad, went down from 3,100 to 2,500, 3,300 to around 2,600. S21 Ultra uh, went down almost 50%. It started off at 5,163. The lowest score was 2,408. The Snapdragon 865 Plus on the other hand on the Fold 2 did pretty well. Max score is 4,171 and the lowest score is 3,413. So from these tests, you can tell that the Exynos 2100 scores a lot higher than the Z Fold 2, but it doesn't maintain that high score for long. The Snapdragon 865 Plus maintains a high score all throughout and then just goes down by, by just a bit. So as your phone heats up, you're going to expect a lot of frame drops on these two phones, the S20 Ultra and the Note 20 Ultra. And I need to do some real life tests as well on the S21 Ultra, run a couple of demanding games and see how well the phone fares with extended gaming. So as usual, like and subscribe, hit that bell icon notification and see you all on my next one.